Hello students, so I'm just going to run through a few examples of the Khan Academy practice. You really should be doing these over and over again until you have it down and making sure that you write down notes. Uh, I don't expect you necessarily to memorize all of these rules. I do expect you to either be able to figure them out on the fly or pick up your notebook and look at an example there. So when I'm multiplying two powers, I just add up the two powers that are there. So 4 to the 4th times 4 to the 3rd is just going to be 4 raised to the 7th because 4 plus 3 is 7 right there. And so anytime you're multiplying, you're just thinking of it as a long string of that base right there. Here, this is uh, asking us to solve for x, and we know that when we multiply two powers, like on the right side, we could write that as 8 to the 3 plus x because you add the two powers in the multiplication problem. And so I know that 8 raised to the 7th is 8 raised to the 3 plus x. So I can solve the equation where 7 is equal to 3 plus x. We've done this type of thing hundreds of times this year. Subtracting gets rid of adding. And so 4 is equal to x. And so with that, I will move on to the next Khan Academy link that I wanted you to work on. So going right back to Canvas and uh, going back down, we, the next one is this one right here, practice powers of powers. You can use either the canvas link or you can navigate here on the left side down to the next one with a pencil. Here we have powers of powers, so we're not adding them anymore because it's not saying seven to the third times seven to the third. We don't do three plus three. It's saying there's actually three copies of seven to the third. So it's seven to the third times seven to the third times seven to the third. You don't actually need to write this all out, but I'm just trying to show you again why it works. 3 plus 3 plus 3 is the same as just taking 3 times 3. So our answer becomes right here, 7 raised to the ninth. You do the exponent by just pressing shift and 6, and that'll get you your exponent right there. So all I did was 3 times 3. On this next one, I just need to do 3 times 2. So moving on to dividing powers, you can see here that they have it all written out for you. And, and like we practice many times, when you have something divided by itself, it's equal to one. So there's a one, there's a one, there's a one, there's a one. And you can just count how many threes are left over. It turns out that there are just two threes left over in the problem. Same sort of idea here. All we really did was we subtracted the uh, we subtracted the top x from the bottom x. Let's go back. There we go. We subtracted the top power from the bottom power. So the left side of this equation just becomes 9 raised to the x minus 3. Because you can just cross off each of the top and the bottom values. And so here we have 9 to the 5. And just like I did a minute or so ago, you can just make the powers equal to each other x minus 3 equals 5. The opposite of minus is plus. So we can just do plus 3 on both sides to get x equals 8. So with that, I'll move on to the next one. Again, you can go back to Canvas for the link, or you can find the next pencil emoji, or pencil, not emoji, but pencil symbol over here. So now we're doing powers of products and quotients, and this just feels like the distributive property. When you have a power that is attached to a multiplication problem or a division problem, you can just bring the power to both factors inside the multiplication problem or the division problem. So when I look at this one here, part A, I could rewrite this as b to the fourth times b squared. Is that equal to b to the ninth? Nope. There's only six b's there. When I look at b times nine, that's different than b to the ninth b to the ninth means b times 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 b. It's different than b times 9. The next one, b to the seventh over b to the fourth, you can subtract 7 minus 4 to get 3. So I worked from the inside because parentheses are usually what you do first. And then b to the third squared becomes b to the sixth. Also not equal to b to the ninth. I should mention also on part A, I could have done the inside of the parentheses first 
to get b cubed and then multiply that by 2 and get b6, b to the 6th. Part d is equal to b to the 9th because 6 plus 3 equals 9. So this is equal to b to the 9th. That's great. And by process of elimination, because they told us there's two answers, I know that part e will also be equal to b to the 9th. But let's just make sure we know why. The top is a multiplication problem, so I go 10 plus 8. Copy down the bottom. And then when you divide, you subtract, and 18 minus 9 is 9. So I know that my two answers are d and e. Okay, let's look at this one here. I have 5 squared over 4 to the 4th. So I know that's going to be equal to 5 to the 8th divided by 4 to the 4th. So it turns out just to be answer choice D. Not a lot more to it. Okay, so that's it for this video here. Please make sure that you're using the links that are there in Canvas and that you're practicing all of these different properties. Again, you don't need to have them memorized. But you do need to either be able to figure them out on the fly or pull out your notebook and have an example that you can look back at. So make sure you're writing down any problems that you're doing and bringing them with you when we have our test in a few classes. Make sure to comment or ask a question if you need.